The last topic we're going to go through today is going to be a discussion on um, what I call commercial music and music for visual media as two separate concepts and how you can make audio, music or sound effects for those two different groups and how they differ, how they're alike. And I would say that fortunately this is an area where I have some qualifications. Let me actually show you my qualifications. Uh, so this is my alma mater, and this is my bachelor's degree. I have a bachelor's degree in music scoring and composition, film scoring and composition, specifically focused on visual media. This is my wheelhouse. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's been hard to get a job in Hollywood doing uh, visual media, especially in COVID times, but we can talk about that. So to explain my terms right here, when I talk about commercial music, I use that as a kind of catch-all for pop, rock, hip hop, dance music, uh, reggae, ska, punk music, anything that you would listen to pretty much just for entertainment purposes, I distinguish this uh, from sort of what sometimes gets referred to as art music, which is like chamber orchestra pieces, symphony orchestras, things that are written in conservatory settings or from conservatory students, and it has a little bit of a different context to it. And I separate both of those from another form of commercialized music, uh, which is music for visual media. Um, Music for visual media is specifically stuff that is meant to be synced to some sort of image. Animations, TV shows, movies, video games. All of these things exist as visual media. Even stuff that you hear on, say, like a website. Like if you have like auto-playing music on a website. In a sense, that is uh, music for visual media. It's a different kind of thing. Typically, commercial music is used in these situations. And commercial music can be music for visual media. There is a concept known as synchronization, where you take an already existing piece of music and you put that in some sort of visual medium. Uh, for example, if you're watching uh, Rocky and you have that kind of like like that fucking song, Eye of the Tiger, which I believe wasn't even the song that they had in Rocky, but like we all associate that music with Rocky training and Rocky jumping up and down and punching the uh, meat bags and then climbing up the steps of the Capitol in Philadelphia. Going, yeah, I did it! And then that music plays and we all feel really proud and excited. Um, yeah, that was a different song. Yes, exactly. But that is a synchronization. They took the established music and they synced it up with the images on the screen. If you're watching commercials, there's tons of commercials out there where you'll hear a popular song that's out right now being used as a backdrop for that song. Before we even get into the differences, just know that everything you do for commercial music in this context can be applied to music for visual media. You can write them kind of at the same time in essence. But if you're writing music explicitly for a visual medium, you're going to have to make a couple of uh, changes to your approach. In the realm of sound effects, there's generally no difference. In fact, typically sound effects that exist within commercial music originally came from sound effects or visual media. There's a concept that I hear people talk about in the music production world all the time in terms of Foley, which is just like, we have this recording of a person walking and we're gonna put that in as texture in our song. Or we get this recording of a crowd and we're gonna put that in our song. Or I'm gonna use this gunshot as a snare drum and that's Foley. In a film, that's not what Foley is. Foley is taking real life sounds and replicating them to overdub 
onto a scene in a movie or a TV show. Like, if you've ever watched Game of Thrones or Harry Potter, and you've seen someone riding a horse, and you hear, and then they get off the horse, you hear, shh, 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 and then you hear, and you see their kind of uh, waistband with the sword jingle, and you hear the click, 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 click of the metal clinging. None of that was actually captured on set. Not a single one of those sounds, with some exceptions, came from the actual set that they shot the scene on. Instead, they shoot the scene, they record the dialogue, and uh, they may capture some other sounds, but what they do is they just send that off to the Foley artist, who's in a big old room, you can look this up on YouTube, there's some really good, vid videos on, really good videos on YouTube about this, and they will match every action. They'll have like some coconuts, and as they watch the horse galloping, and then they have like this big thing of like leather, and when the person's getting off, they like wrestle the leather up against the microphone like this. When they have like the story clinging, they'll have like, and they'll try and get it so that it matches every single beat. They have little pockets of dirt or gravel or what have you that they'll step in to get the sound of the footsteps matching up step by step what happens. If I uh, pop over here for a second, I can go over to my audio packs and right here, I have a bunch of sound effect libraries that I picked up while I was at school, while I was at AAU. And these are essentially stock Foley sound effect libraries. They're great for TV shows. They're great for periods of time where you don't have the budget or the time to actually record all of your Foley live. Instead, they have kind of like these more generic sounds that you can work with. Different ambiences. You've probably heard some of these sounds in your own uh, time. And if you're trying to get a TV show written and produced and edited and finalized in seven days, this is a great resource because then you just drop that thing in when you see someone punch and then you just go, uh oh, there was a, there was a, whoops, there was a punch there. There was another punch there. There was another punch there. I got to get that stuff in. And eventually a bunch of music producers were like, hey, there's all these CDs that you can pay money for. They have all these really cool sounds. What if I use those sounds for music? And over time, we've started creating our own sound effects that are commonly used inside of music, uh, things like risers and downlifters and impact samples. And those have started to creep back into film and visual media. You'll hear like a little at the end of some impactful scene when you feel the tension rising and then it goes blah and then everything goes crazy. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into making sound effects specifically for visual media uh, as opposed to commercial music because as you can see, it's just the same thing. But music has a very different role when it comes to visual media versus commercial music. Music serves some sort of role, some sort of purpose when we listen to it. I don't think music requires itself to have some sort of purpose, but when you're listening to music just to consume it on your own, you're paying all of your attention or some big part of your attention on the music, unless it's literally background noise. Visual media treats music differently. Music actually has very specific purposes. One, music is supposed to complement 
or contrast what is visible on screen. Let me get an example here. We're going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to look up two things. And then I'm going to go get some sort of visual. Uh, first things first. I'm going to mute this. And actually, we're going we're gonna to play two different types of music. All right, that's one way of perceiving that 25 second audio or clip of video. Now, what happens if we try to contrast it? It's a very different impression of that scene, right? We have two very different moods for the same set of visuals. As a composer, your job is going to be to understand what is going to happen. And are you going to complement or contrast what is seen on screen. I'm gonna keep using this video. Uh, shout out to Gabby and Alex, I guess, for this video. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the second way of using visual media, which is to change the pace of the scene. Same exact sequence. And now let's see what happens when we change the timing, the pacing of it with the video, with the music. Now, there's not much happening here, but it feels a little bit faster, right? It feels like the cuts are happening sooner, right? Now, let's do the same exact thing, but use music that's slow, that's, kind, that's trying to kind of make a scene feel longer. like we're taking a bit more time between each cut, right? Oh yeah, it definitely fits. Now, <clears throat> the third way of writing music is to express the unstated emotion. This is somewhat similar to complement and contrast, but this is more about transferring information to the listener. All of these are about translating or transmitting information to your viewer, to the person who is watching the movie, playing the game, watching the TV show, what have you. So I don't, don't really have any good examples. I, don't, I can't really think of a great visual uh, auditory example for this right now, but think about it this way. You have two people talking and their conversation is about going to a um, park. All they're doing is they're saying like, hey, why don't we go to Central Park tomorrow? We'll go get some uh, hot dogs and we'll go see, you know, the horses. 
And then as they're talking, as the camera starts to pan away from them, just talking about the uh, this mundane activity, you have these songs coming in that represent love. They sound very warm. They sound very inviting. Uh, they sound very yearning. Even though the scene is of these two people just talking about going to the park and the camera panning away from them, the music is telling us these people are in love. If you are watching a movie and you have someone talking to their son, it's like, son, one day you're going to have to leave this home. You're going to have to find what it is that you are supposed to do with the rest of your life. And you need to discover what it is to be a true adult in the world. And as the father is saying this to their son or to their daughter, to whomever, you hear this music playing in the background. This music that sounds inspiring, that sounds hopeful. Clearly the language might not sound inspiring or hopeful, but the music is gonna transmit this uh, feeling of, I want you to succeed, I want you to grow, I want you to become this thing. I'm not telling you this to kick you out, I'm doing this to encourage you. It's stating the unspoken. It's telling the audience essentially how they're supposed to feel about any given scene. Those are the three main roles of music for visual media. In terms of how to write it, the actual process is mostly the same. In most cases, you're basically just writing a really short song. You're basically coming up with musical fragments that exist either in a couple of bars, in a single beat, like a little ba da ba ba da bum bum pa at the end of a scene in a TV show, just to close everything out and wrap things up. If you're playing a video game, and like, let's say you're playing uh, The Legend of Zelda, and you open a chest, and then as the camera pans back, and you have Link kind of turning around, with, oh, I got the item. What do you hear? Ba -da -da -da. That little stinger right there is meant to evoke some sort of emotional reaction to tell the person who's watching it, who's playing the game in this case, that you have succeeded at finding a treasure. You are getting rewarded. Ba -da -da -da. Big, exciting, helpful. And let's say you are writing an action sequence. You could have a section that starts off with big drums. Big brass coming in and everything's going. And then all of a sudden you have this big reverse symbol. Everything cuts. And then right as that moment happens where the audio cuts out, the camera pans to the hero pinned down where the enemy has a sword up. It's like, I'm going to kill you now. And then you have this very small violin playing. You can have these drastically different contexts because what you're doing is matching, almost serving the picture. This may require you to break the rules, big air quotes there, the rules about writing commercial music. Generally, when you're writing commercial music, your stuff's going to be broken down into bars of two, four, or eight, for, or into phrases, excuse me, of two, four, or eight bars. And everything will end naturally on like a two bar section, a four bar section, an eight bar section, a 16 bar section, which is just two eight bars, um, or 32 or 64, some multiple of that. In music for visual media, you will have times where you'll have like a section of like 1-8 followed by 4-4, four four, followed by 3-8, followed by like 2 sixteenths or 3 sixteenths, just so that you can stagger the music to match the beats of the scene. You need to actually do what's called spotting. 
Typically, this is done with the director um, and the editor and the composer uh, or those three and the composer's assistants or uh, the music editor is another person who's involved usually in these where they'll watch through the movie or they'll watch through a scene and they'll only have the actual video or they'll have the video and some temporary music to kind of get the idea out. And the uh, director and the composer will watch back and they'll at, they'll at certain moments pause the video and say, okay, there. That's where I want some big thing to happen, where I want uh, you know these big explosion sounds and I want all this crazy stuff to happen here. And this moment, I want it to be very sweet and serene. And you're getting these spotting moments, these cues that you need to identify the composer or the music editor or whoever is in charge of it is going to literally write down the time code on the film to say, okay, at you know two hours and 31 minutes and 15 seconds and 10 frames, we need to have a beat that does this thing. You go through and get all of that. Then the composer takes that, takes the video, removes the stock music if there is any, and then writes original score that hits all of those beats. It may require, like I just said, changing the meter, not necessarily having those perfect 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 bar phrases. And also, it can often involve a lot of tempo changes so that you can maybe speed up this section so that it lands right there on that cue just a little bit faster. Or maybe you need to slow down the section. So you have it going, you have it going, and then you slow it down incrementally until boom, you hit on this slower moment. And that slow down allows you to head more comfortably into a much slower tempo for the next section. It will jump around a lot. I find that for video game music, uh, you can take a lot of cues from electronic music, very loop-based compositions. Um, with TV shows, with movies, it is a linear medium. There is a start, there is a middle, and there is an end. You know when those things are happening, and they happen the same exact way every single time you observe or consume that piece of media. Rocky Balboa, or Rocky, never changes. There's never gonna be a moment where you watch Rocky, and instead of punching the cows, he goes and decides to be a postal worker and gives up on his dream, and the movie's over. That will never happen when you watch Rocky. When you're playing a video game, it's a non-linear medium. You might have a player who stands for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes in a single room, in a single level, trying to find how a certain puzzle works, or trying to find all the collectibles, or trying to uncover all the secrets. Since video game music uh, is something that must essentially handle any given song lasting any given piece of time, you want loops. You want a lot of little loops. You want a lot of things that can uh, essentially recurse indefinitely um, without necessarily feeling boring. A lot of times these loops will be varied. Sometimes it'll be just kind of a really short, catchy song that's like the old school way of doing things, the Mario theme. I think we all know the Mario song at this point. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. But that was an example of a short, catchy, looping song that every time you start a level, it starts over again. But it's such a really iconic and engaging piece of music that we don't really mind it. And then when you go to the next level, butta butta butta, butta butta butta, and again, it's just so catchy. Over time, people found that you could get away with more stuff. Uh, I would say one of the biggest advents was what happened in the Left 4 Dead franchise, where you had these really short orchestral cues, but they would be tied to the action. So, if the characters were just kind of meandering around, waiting for something, the music would be like, ba, 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 do, 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 like really slow and ambient. And then, as the action ramped up, it would trigger a cue. 
like big action epic stuff and by having the music respond to the players rather than have the music exist as just a linear medium you extend how impactful those sequences are generally you will find that film music leans towards percussion leans towards brass instruments, leans towards strings. Um, woodwinds are sometimes used, but they're less common because they tend to have a very particular harmonic range. And melodically speaking, things are, I wouldn't say avoidant of the human vocal range, but you want to account for how many other sounds are going to be in the song or be in the game. For example, you are probably, unless the music is the primary driving force of the game or of the movie, you're probably going to have less low end in your music on a uh, song for a movie, a TV show, or a video game compared with a commercial song, something that would go on a single or an EP or an album all of the sound effects in the game or in the movie, that's gonna want all that low end. If you're watching Transformers, and then there's this big giant sub bass going blah, 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 and then you have these big explosions, big robot Transformer sounds, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be overwhelming. We can't even hear it. The sound mixer is gonna have to make a compromise somewhere. So rather than that, the music's gonna be big, tight, transient, heavy drums, bloom, 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 and then boom, it's gonna be these big explosions that are going to take over all the low end. If you're having a very intimate sequence, you'll have like that one lone high string just kind of sawing away, but it's gonna be way further back into the mix. It's gonna be way quieter than if it was standing on its own in some commercial song. If you can keep all of that in your head, if you can understand that at the core, commercial music, as I call it, is meant for the listener to observe the music. In visual media, the, mu the, the viewer is meant to observe the piece. You are not writing music for yourself. When you're writing, I mean, honestly, when you're writing any music, you're not writing it just for yourself, but um, you're not writing music that wants to call attention to itself, that wants to be noticed, unless that's a feature of the, the film or game or whatever. Generally speaking, you have music as a secondary role. So if you wanna work in film, you really shouldn't think that your music is more important than anything else. Your music is in fact the least important but most necessary part of the production. You can feel the absence of sound in a movie even though it's not required. You can't really experience a movie just from the sound. So, no matter how important your music is, your sound effects are to the visual media in question, it's not as important as you might want it to be, so don't get too precious over it. Focus on what the visuals are asking for, what the director needs, what the story needs, and make your stuff to work with that. Be more essentially subservient in how you approach it. I think that is going to be it. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the little bell thing. Do all the YouTube stuff. Check out my Patreon. Check out my Discord. Check out my Twitch. Check out my Twitter. All that fun stuff. This will be where we cut the video.